Today is Tuesday, January 11th, 2011, and welcome back to your StarCraft II Daily Report. Let's go ahead and start things off by going straight to the source. Patch 1.2 is officially live, and if you head on over to the official StarCraft II website, battle.net backslash sc2, you can see those patch notes. Now, there were many changes that took place, and far too many for me to go over in detail here. The link will be available, so you can look at them yourself, but I'm going to go over the balance changes. Now, aside from those specific balance changes, I do want to note that chat channels were added to battle.net. Um, this is... Much to the excitement of many players, many players were, were looking for chat channels, and it's really good that they're finally implemented into Battle.net. Um, this is going to make it easier to talk with people on Battle.net, and it kind of will eliminate the seclusion that is currently the state. Basically, if, if you're on Battle.net and your specific friends aren't on, it's very hard to kind of get in touch with other people to set up games and stuff like that. But with chat channels, this is going to be made much easier. Now, in regards to the balance changes, the following did take place. As for, far as general changes, players can no longer block off ramp with 2x2 two two buildings. Um, for Protoss, specific changes that we had take place. Hallucination research time has been decreased from 110 to 80. The observer cost was decreased from 50 and 100 to 25 and 75. Phoenix build time decreased from 45 to 35. And the Void Raid now deals 20% more damage to massive units. But unfortunately, the Flux Vein speed was removed. Now for Terran, there has been some SCV changes. Uh, repairing SCVs now assume the same threat priority as the unit they're repairing. What this means specifically is that if you have a bunch of SCVs repairing a Thor and your enemy units are attacking, that they're just as likely to attack the SCVs as they are the Thor. Whereas in the past, they would just continue attacking the Thor and they would ignore the SCVs, allowing the SCVs to freely repair. This is no longer going to be the case. And then also the SCV construction movement has now been made more consistent. You can kind of expect the movements much more. It will be much less erratic than it has been in the past. So again, there were many changes that took place and I do have that link for you available so you can check them out yourself um, overall fairly sizable patch um, definitely a lot of things that were changed tons of bug bug fixes as well so that's always good to see um, definitely get rid of those bugs but that about does it uh, let's move on over to the top 200 Still on the official StarCraft II website, we did have an update to the top 200 list. Now, I'm probably going to butcher a couple of these names, but I'll do the best I can. Uh, starting off with number five, we have Root QXC, very well known player. Um, number three, tied for third, is Kawi and Alabu Utu O. Ooh. Yeah, that's really bad. I have no idea. Please, someone tell me in the comments below how you're probably supposed to pronounce that name. I'm really bad with names sometimes. Uh, number two is DZE. And number one, we have Picklick. P-I-Q-L-I-Q. -I -Q -L -I -Q. Again, the names, I can't do it. Uh, someone, please help me out here. Pronouncing words is not my forte. And that about does it from straight to the source. And let's go ahead and move on over into our community news. Heading on over to TeamLiquid.net, the Team Liquid Weekly was posted, basically just a general wrap-up of all things Team Liquid that have occurred in the past week, so a real nice summarization of everything that occurred in the week, and it's definitely something I suggest ch checking out. And also, if you are a fan of StarCraft and you don't know much about Team Liquid, well, shame on you, you have got to, and I would suggest spending some time in the forums there and just perusing the site. There's a lot of really good, useful information. It's definitely one of the number one sources for StarCraft II information, you know, aside from four strategies gaming of course still hanging out at teamliquid.net we have seen a post announcing that gsl is hiring english casters so if you are an american speaking caster you love starcraft 2 and you would love the chance to live in korea travel to korea get paid and yeah basically cast starcraft 2 officially then now is your chance all the details about this can be found on the website but basically what's going to happen is you're going to send a submission um, of you casting a game and if they like you and if they think you would do a good job then you would get hired you would get the job and you would be casting for the gsl now this isn't going to be the upper echelon of casting this casting is going to be for the a class matches as opposed to the s class matches but either way you will be casting for the gsl and that is very exciting so if this is something you are interested in head on over to team liquid check out this post and you can find out some more news there that's pretty exciting stuff there guys now moving on over to 4strategygaming.com, there was a recent post by Jason Anderson entitled Hotkeys and How to Use Them. This is kind of a nice summarization of basically how to use hotkeys. This will really help you if you're a player and you haven't gotten comfortable and you don't really know much about using hotkeys. 
Hockeys are absolutely vital. In fact, it was one of the tip of the days. I think it was either yesterday or the day before. All the days are kind of blurring together at this point. But it was a tip of the day not too long ago. And again, hockeys, super vital. Check out this post if you haven't seen it. It should give you some insight and help you to uh, basically become better acquainted with hockeys. And again, if you don't use them, you should. And I suggest doing so immediately. And that's pretty much everything for community news. And let's go ahead and move on into the next subject, the Forum Lurker. Over on the official Battle.net StarCraft 2 forums, there was a post not too long ago by Smalter. Uh, basically, he's saying that he recorded his mouse movements and he has basically graphs to show you where his mouse moves while he's playing game of StarCraft. This is really interesting, really cool. I'm kind of interested to see what can be taken from something like this. Um, but yeah, essentially what he did is he played the game, he recorded his mouse movements, and then basically just has a, an image showing you where the mouse moves throughout the game, where the mouse moves throughout the course of the game. Now, someone in the post said that um, you shouldn't post these online. Wait, I got to find this real quick. It says, you shouldn't post these online. The clustering of mouse movement shows where your eyes prefer to focus on the screen. People can use certain algorithms to determine your name, address, age, and religion from the coordinates of your eye movement. Rubbish, sir. I do not believe that one bit. If you can show me scientific proof that that is the case, I would be really interested in seeing so. And if you guys dispute what I'm saying, then feel free to enlighten me. I'm all about uh, discussion on things, but I don't believe that there are algorithms based on your mouse movement that can determine your name, address, and age. Unless you are subconsciously writing out your name, address, and age while you're playing StarCraft with your mouse, which I don't think is happening. But either way, that was an interesting post. That response made me giggle, though. I wanted to share that with you. It is an interesting post, and I'm going to go ahead and leave the links to not only the official post, but the link that he has basically summing up the mouse movements and showing the different images that, again, show how his mouse moves throughout the game. Now moving on over to the Team Liquid forums, there was a recent post by Skysen, which is showing you guys a Marine Ghost build. It's a TVP build for Terran players. Um, the, the core of the build is again Marine Ghost. Now he's got the basic build order, um, gives you kind of a general idea of how to go ahead and perform the build, and then also gives you some replays to check it out. So if you're looking for a new build, if you're tired of Marine Marauder Medivac, or you're tired of uh, two racks or one racks fast, fast expand against Protoss, and you want to try a new build, go ahead and check it out. And you know, if this is interesting enough, which I think it may be, I haven't really dived into it too much, but it seems like a good post, I may actually go ahead and post a strategy video on that as well we shall see what's going to happen though and yeah that's about does it so that pretty much wraps it up for the forum lurker and let's go ahead and check out what's going on in tournaments for tomorrow, Wednesday, January 12th, we have three tournaments taking place. The first of which is the Steel Series Go For SC2 number 72. This is an EU tournament. Second of which we have the EU Craft Cup Light number 30, again an EU tournament. And lastly, the US tournament is the Undeniable Tournament number 12. All links and information about those can be found below, so if you're interested in attending these tournaments and participating in them, you will be able to do so. And now we move on to the game of the day. Today's game of the day is actually not a game from today. It is an older game, but you know what? I really liked it. I actually posted it on January 3rd. It is a game between White Raw and Jimpo. It is a Protoss versus Terran. And it was a really exciting matchup. It was on Lost Temple. It was a two-part game. I think the actual game time was around 30 minutes. Um, so the link to that is going to be available. If you haven't seen it already, check it out. If you have seen it already, then check it out again. It was a fun and exciting game. I enjoyed casting it, and hopefully you guys enjoyed watching it. So yeah, let's go over that again. Let's check out that game one more time. Why not, right? And today's tip of the day is do not overcommit. There is no reason if you attack your opponent and you feel outnumbered, outgunned, and just out of place that you should continue with the engagement. If you decide to push out at any point in the game and you get to your opponent's defenses, you get to the front of their base, they've got siege tanks siege, sieged up, they've got Colossus on the high ground, they've got Brewlords there, my gosh. If they've got anything that makes you feel like you are outnumbered and you cannot engage without losing all of your forces and not doing significant damage then why engage it is always smarter to pull back gather up your troops wait until you have more maybe try to harass in the meantime do some more expanding try to get an advantage and then proceed again there is nothing stopping you short of stim pack chasing you down or force fields locking you in place things like that unless you go too far forward and engage too closely if you are in the position where you can see what they have you know you're outgunned then just pull back don't overcommit don't lose all your units for no good reason 
only to come out empty handed and have no advantage. You always want to make sure that in any given attack that you have an advantage and the attack will go in your favor barring any huge mishaps, any micro mishaps, anything like that. So the tip of the day, don't overcommit, don't be a dummy. That's basically today's tip of the day. And let's wrap things up as always with our community questions. Today's community question comes from Coltrane. Now he's been sending me a lot of community questions, so I figured it's about time I let him get one through. Um, definitely, I, I, I applaud and appreciate the effort there, Coltrane. And if you're wondering, yes, it is in fact the Coltrane from Gears of War, the very person, that's right. So his question is, how should I go about stopping a Zerg Roach Rush as a Terran player? I've tried pumping out Marauders as soon as I scouted the Roach Warren and pulling SCVs off the line when they began attacking my wall off in order to repair it, but it was not very effective. Is there another way to defend this attack well coltrane let me tell you right off the bat in order to defend against a road ro rush you're probably gonna need one of two things not probably but you will you're gonna need a bunker and some marauders those two things should do quite well for you a real big issue is a lot of terran players who go for it depending on your build if you go for something like a 111 most of the time your early game defense is marines and if you have solely marines against a roach push you will lose the fight there's no doubt about it um you may send up some scvs to help with that attack but you're going to lose about most of those as well so what you need to defend against a roach rush you need some marauders and you need a bunker and even if you don't have marauders you at the very least need a bunker and repairing scvs now realize if your opponent is smart that he will target the scvs and kill them and stop them from repairing and then kill the bunker so you just have to be wise to this you have to be paying attention and try to make sure they stay alive repair the bunker and then get out your marauders as soon as possible and that's basically what you're going to need to defend the roach rush and if you guys have question of the days, you can go ahead and send them to me at force at force Make sure you title the email question of the day and don't put things like pick me in there because it doesn't really work. It doesn't help that much. Um, but if you're persistent, that helps. That's for certain. So that about does it for today's Starcraft 2 daily report. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I'm going to be coming out with an actual game for you today as well and a strategy video. I promised a strategy video. It is coming. It is coming. Just hold on to your butts, all right? Thanks a lot, guys. And as always, keep watching and keep owning.